Okay, hello everybody. We're gonna see if I can do a better job uh, with this than I did yesterday. Yesterday was the first time I'd ever tried to do a live stream video, so I'm still trying to get the camera set up and get everything figured out. Um, but let's uh, let's get this going and uh, actually make it print because that's what what you actually want to see. You don't want to you don't want to see me talking and uh, making really bad jokes. Okay, so one of the first things we're, we need to do is we need to raise this z-axis, and we're going to do that by hand and just twisting it, and twisting it clockwise is going to raise it up, and they say to put it about three-quarters of the way up, so that way we can get to everything we need to get to. Okay. So now we got a got to take this cover off to get to the buddy board, all the electronics. So that's a two and a half millimeter. Everything is going to be two and a half millimeter. And they did give you uh, give you a tool. Then they two tools come with this. So that's all that's needed for assembly. And we only have four bolts. So that part comes away. Now we can lift this out of the way to get to the buddy board. So that is the new Prusa designed control board. And this little window right here is going to be important in a few minutes. That's what we're going to use to line it up to the frame. So move your uh, y-axis all the way to the back. And then grab the ribbon cable out of the LCD package. Okay. So the ribbon cable is going to plug in in the towards the middle and it's the only plug it can, it'll actually fit in but it's towards the middle and this tab so it's facing inward so you have to move some of the wires out of the way to get to it buddy board does look nice and compact okay then they want us to feed the cable through this window right here. With my hands, it's not quite as easy as I make it look on the instructions, but. Okay. There we go, we'll pull that through. And then it goes down around. So we'll leave that like that. Okay, so we've got three T-nuts that we need to line up. So 
So to eyeball it, I'm going to kind of line it up where the mark is. I'm going to push it in. Actually, I take that back. You have to, because the bed is so far up, you've got to start some of these a little bit earlier. So you'll you'll hold this in place and, and get them as close as you can. You're not going to tighten them at this stage because once you get the screws in place, you're going to move it and then tighten it. Okay. So it looks like we're going to use the M3 by 20. And we need uh, two of them in this case. Actually, I take that, take that back. We need one, and it's going to go into this, the front one. Easier way is I've got to walk around the table. We've got an M3 by 12 that is going to go into the top T nut. Yeah, I'm sure his video is a lot better than mine. I should have just put it together until we could get it actually printing. All right, so they want us through this window near the uh, Ethernet port, there's a mark on the back of the printer, so they want us to slide it through there. And I do have to see if I can get this M3 by 40 in place as well. I thought this would be a little bit easier. I mean, it's only three screws, so how can I mess it up so badly?
It's got a really tight fit, but you move the bed to the front, and then you can tighten this top T-nut. And you can go ahead and tighten the side one. Yeah, lining it up is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. That was uh, what, I sh what I probably should have done is measured it and gotten everything in place. Okay, now we've got the LCD screen in 3 by 12. Only one way to plug in the ribbon cable. And that goes in the side there. All right, now that leaves us down to the wiring. This is always fun because I can't see as well as probably you guys can. So we've got the bed heater. And then somewhere we've got... A Y axis which appears to be stuck in a rubber band. There we go. They want us to run that under the printer through this window that we were using to line everything up. All right. There is the Y axis. It's towards the front. Only one way you can plug it in, of course. So just look for the x-axis, and then the y goes right next to that. The bed heater is pretty easy. Only one way it can go in, only one plug for it to go in. And then the same for the thermistor on the bed. It's in the back corner, only spot it can go in. Right. Finally, a little bit more progress. It says to go ahead and uh, put the wire to the same position as the wires coming out already. Then we can put the cover back on. It's actually a cool looking cover. There's two tabs in the back.
I'm sure it was a lot easier for Prusa because he's built a lot of them. These are a little notch. It's not really a notch, but they're rubber feet, and the rubber feet uh, appear to give it a, give enough clearance to where the the y-axis cable doesn't hit anything. Probably in future versions, I could see them at least putting a tie wrap there. Okay, so now. Now my twins are running around in here. Says we can eat the gummy bears. All right, fun part, we get to remove the protective film. And here comes somebody stealing the gummy bears. Come here, Anderson. No, can you say hi to everybody? Hi. No, 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 no. Okay. He has gotten all the gummy bears from every fruit that I've built. I've only had a few, and he gets really upset when I take them. It's kind of funny. They taste a lot better than the gummy bears we get here. There are some spare parts that come with it. Some alcohol cleaning pads. Don't touch any buttons, buddy. Okay, Anderson, enough. Go. He loves cameras. Sometimes we just tell him the camera's turned on and he'll sit there for hours dancing. No, not right now. Buddy. So power cable plugs into the back. Sorry, an app needs an upgrade. Turn your volume down, please. Okay, so let's actually turn this on. Let's see what happens. Wow. Let me see it. Yeah, they're they're actually twins, and they can uh, be quite uh, quite distracting and sometimes quite helpful. All right, so it says, hi, this is your original Prusa Mini. Please insert the USB drive that came with your Mini to reset the firmware. So it looks like the USB goes on the, on the back control board. They're just crawling in the Promegas, so that's fine. Okay, so I just reset it, and now it is flashing the firmware. So this is going to be, take about 20 seconds, so I'm going to go grab some filament. Yeah, it's interesting. It's telling me to reset it again. It's 
saying about 20 seconds now. Now it's verifying. Okay. Yeah. Got a it is what it is. That is what? Oh, what is it? Oh. Here, I thought it was doing on it automatically, but it actually wants you to go ahead and uh, confirm it. Like um uh, like Thousand Jib just uh, told me to do. Glad you caught that because uh, my little distractions uh, are, are helping make sure that I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I got a light bit. What if I talk? Yeah, it's not a touch screen. It looks like it should be. Is this my chalk? Ah. It's my chalk. Okay, it's asking me if I got a filament sensor. I did not. I've never never been one to go with filament sensors. No. Okay, guys, quiet. Okay, now we've got a wizard for a self-test. It's checking the fan. Okay. No, buddy, it's getting hot, so I don't want you to touch it. Okay, calibrated home, now it's doing a hot end. It's a really nice looking screen. Appears to have really nice resolution. Sure, it won't be long before this gets copied because that is, I like how it holds the bearings. So that uh, the hot end setup is pretty neat. If you want your bears, you gotta be good. I don't want them. You don't want the bears now? No. You can keep it. Oh, you keep the bears? I want to eat, eat them now. You want to eat them now? <coughs> no. Please? No. I don't want to. I want to eat them. Okay. Let's put them right there. Okay, you can put them right there. If they're eating them? No, it's not dirty. Okay. 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 Okay, calibrate your filament. So first layer calibration. Let me have the bells. We're not going to play with the bells. Yes, you can have the stickers. I want to put them in here. Okay, Dad. Then I want to put them on top. Got you. Okay, I gave one. Okay, so we're I loading the filament, sticking it away. Okay, that one you want no end. Anderson, quiet, please. One. Now it's purging the filament. Okay. Okay. 
It looks like they're already shipping the uh, second day orders uh, from October the 13th. This printer was ordered uh, early on October uh, 12th. Yeah, we got filament coming out. No one down, please. Okay, now it's going to do the Z height. Yeah, normally I don't do live streams, but I wanted to play around and try and do some, some live streams and some better videos. Most of my videos are just printers printing something for a couple layers and uh, Some of them are pretty boring. Some are Dad, some of them are videos of printers how failing. How do you get off? Um, I don't think that one is actually a sticker. So I'm about 1.1 uh, millimeters away on the Z height calibration. And the bead is looking pretty good at that height. It's got a good squish, but not too squished. Hi, Aaron. I know you told me to stand in front of the camera, but uh, somehow I ended up to, off to the side. Dad, Dad, help me get the shirt off. What sticker? Uh, a bad shirt or a quit or one. The printer sticker? Yes, yeah, a big bad one. Mm -hmm. I want to eat uh, a light be a shirt. Yeah, oh, the one that a shirt. Yep, you can put it on uh, the back of your hair. Mm -hmm. No. I can't eat out. Don't put it in here, please. Go put it in your room. I I I put it on it. Okay. Do you want to repeat the last step and adjust the distance? I'm happy with the distance, so I'm going to say no. Got a picture of Joseph Prusa telling us happy printing. Take this off real quick and clean it. Whatever you do, never use uh, acetone on these. Use 99% IPA, 90% IPA. Dad, no cleans it really shirt. well. Dad, no where I put my shirt. Oh, on your belly, please. So I've got um, let's give it a good cleaning with the alcohol. These are expendable. They do wear out over time. So if you're printing the same model in the same spot, you're, you're going to see a lot of wear. OK, 
Okay, guys, out. You're starting to bump into things out. So if you're printing the, the same model over and over, it's a good idea to move the model around. That way you get the longest amount of use out of the bed. So now, uh, going to print a bulldozer uh, pre-sliced uh, in Prusa Slicer. Hit print and see what happens. Yes, the box did come with two wipes. Dad. Dad. And it also came with a... Uh, I can figure out where the camera is. So it came with a needle for cleaning the nozzle, and it came with some wipes. Yes, I just pre-sliced it. It's a, it's a it's a bulldozer, so it's a little bit more complicated. It's got some overhangs in there. Um, there are quite a few models already on the USB stick that are pre-sliced by Prusa. Uh, this one I just used the um, 150 micron. I used a 150 micron profile. So I'm curious how this uh, cooling fan setup is going to do with uh, like a Microsoft. I don't know. I found it on Thingiverse, I guess. It's supposed to be a two part model uh, where you print it in two colors. So far, really quiet. I do have a Craftbot 3 uh, running in the background. The Craftbot 3 is 44 decibels. And it's got two print heads printing. So just the ambient noise right now is 44 decibels. Thank you. Don't touch this. We don't need this. No, we don't need that. Okay, now it's printing its prime line. Okay, I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer. Let's see if I can do this. Hopefully, the autofocus doesn't. Uh, it's actually some old uh, Craftbot uh, PLA. Uh, it's actually a pretty good PLA. I did dry it all day before we before we did this. I didn't trust the uh, the little amount of uh, filament that came with the Prusa. So printing, I've still got about 44 decibels, so it's uh, quite quiet. So that's not horrible to get it set up and going. Um, three screws plus uh, dealing with a couple of wires. It's uh, really nice. They've got everything pre-tensioned. And I've got to say, it's the motion system is a lot more robust than I was expecting it to be. And they've got some really long. Um, please stop doing that. Mm -hmm. On the uh, 10 millimeter rods, it looks like they've got 
uh, 60 to 80 millimeter uh, long bearings on it. I can't tell what brand. Uh, for now, Adam, I was just going to try and get the printer working, and then uh, later on I'll, uh, I'll figure out the networking. Do you want a trophy? Mm -hmm. I kind of I kind of I I kind of I do you want the password to the computer? Okay, do you want... I guess uh, I'm going to tell you the password to my kid's computer. Still incredibly quiet. I mean, 45 decibels. And actually, the, the craft bot is making more noise than this is. And the craft bot is incredibly quiet. No. Uh -uh, don't do that. That's glass. Okay. I want you out, please. Here. Go sit Go sit on the couch. Okay. Go watch a movie for now. Okay, you want the trophy. I don't know the password, but don't change it. Yeah. So the twins are, uh, they're peaking at around 72 decibels. Uh, the printer's 45 decibels. So it, I mean, it's amazingly quiet. First layer looks really good. I'll take a picture of the first layer. And now we're on the second layer, and it's uh, so tell us what speed. Aaron says he just announced my horrible live stream to 66,000 people on Facebook. Thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate that. Uh, only 14 people watching. I, uh, thanks. Thank you all for coming to watch this horrible live stream. At least the printer is printing so you can watch that instead of having to watch me. So now it's printing faster, 48 to 50 decibels, so incredibly quiet. Sure, let me try that, Adam. Hey, how's that? I hate this autofocus. It's actually a mirror too, isn't it? <laughs> yes, the room is much more quiet without the twins. Does anybody know how to... Uh, Flip the camera around so it's not mirrored.
Yes, Greg. In, in the uh, Prusa slicer, it does let you set first layer. Huh, okay. I mean, yeah, it's mirrored on my end, so. And yeah, Frank, it, it is a Logitech. I wanted to get a better camera, but um, for now, I'll just use the webcam. The webcam can do a good job as long as it uh, doesn't go crazy with the autofocus. Heat sink is really cool. Doesn't seem to be uh, any heat creep at all at this point. So there is a way to run your own unsigned firmware on the buddy board. And so in the instructions, it does explain how to do that. You actually have to break a part of the board. It voids your warranty, but then you can run whatever firmware you want to run. It does say FAT32 for the USB drive. Got about 20 pages for notes in the menu. Set password here. For Jensen's computer? I don't know the password. Just play on your Kindle. There are some ASA and ADS instructions in the manual. They do recommend an enclosure. So I think this hot end will go up to 300C. Thanks, Ray. Good luck with your meeting. I don't miss those. Ah, uh, Steve, he's 14. There's no clue what his password is. It might be password one. At least I know the only thing he does on it is Fortnite, so. He doesn't do Facebook or anything like that. He wants to uh, be a Fortnite pro, so he's trying to go through the Fortnite ladders. Your password is password one? I honestly expected this printer to be noisier. Yeah, 
Yeah, Steve, uh, is it Frost Bank? Is it Citibank? You know, we've got to know your uh, the bank you use so we can use your password. I am printing a bulldozer. It's supposed to be a multi-part model, two-color model. It's got some good overhangs in it, so we're going to test uh, how, how it bridges. It's like a benchy, but um, different. Something I can give to the kids because they've got enough benchies. I even mail benchies to people. I think, uh, Shep, what did we send him around 40 benchies at, at some point for Christmas? Yes, there's quite a few files. There's a the the tree frog on it is um, variable height. Uh, I think it's got a, a Prusa model on it. They're all pre-sliced uh, Prusa G code though, Steve. Um, I didn't look at every one, but there's probably ten models on there already. Uh, yeah, bumping the table doesn't seem to bother this printer at all. Okay, the gummy bears are now destroyed. The mini gummy bears are gone. He wants more, so I guess I have to order some more purses. Now ask whatever questions you are, otherwise this could get a little bit boring. So find something to give away. Gotta be something in my shop I need away. I ordered this many uh, on the on the first day, uh, so October twelfth around uh, ten in the morning. Yes, I ordered two minis in total, Adam, because I do want to I do want to try out the print farm feature. Um, It looks like my second mini will be here on Monday, uh, but a good friend of mine wants it because uh, he has started making started making these uh, screws, and so the mini can actually handle this, and so they. Screw together and it holds a dirt cart racing tire. And so you put it on a drill, you put the tire in a bucket. Oh, we found some more bears. That's just for me. Oh. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, anyway, he puts his screw on the tire, you put the tire in a bucket with some scrub brushes and just hit it with the drill and it, it cleans all the dirt off the tires. So he doesn't have enough machines to keep up with what he's doing, so my second mini is gonna go to him. He ordered a mini, so whenever he gets his, you're probably right, it'll probably be April, May, and so then he'll send it, send it to me and we'll trade. Anderson, do not go in there, buddy. No, sir. That's where the dangerous machines are. You don't go in there. That's why it's blocked off from you. No, just leave it alone.
Yeah, you know, uh, the Ender 3 Pro, I, I've got to admit, I did order one. The Amazon had one with a coupon, so it came out to 213 plus. 213 plus tax. Oh, I've got some there. The CNC machines are in there. The uh, table saw. Ah, ah, no, sir. The drill press and things like that. They are normally not this rambunctious, but apparently all the kids in school were uh, going crazy. The, the teacher blamed it on the full moon that we've got Friday the 13th. Who knows if that's true, but it seems to be, uh, they both seem to be a little bit more wild than normal. So yeah, I got the Ender 3 Pro, Amazon, $215 uh, with a coupon. And then I went ahead and ordered the BLV upgrade kit. Um, so I'm gonna play with that. I do have a BLV cube printer. Uh, it's not in the shop area because unfortunately it's uh, too big to go through the door. So annoyingly for my wife, the BLV cube sits pretty close to the kitchen. And it's probably uh, just slightly smaller than a stove. Great printing printer though. You know, uh, Ben Levi did a great job on that. Got the rail core as well. The rail core is great. Uh, it gets pricey though, the real core. I do have a custom Hevo that, that uh, I've done some videos on, but I will do more videos on it. It's got a dual Z, it, it trams itself. And it's got a Prusa extruder on it right now and it, it actually prints some some great, I call it my Prusa Core XY. The infill is holding up nicely. I'm going to go and look at, uh, I'm going to start the slicer and see what speeds we've got. Did you take that off the tree? Mm -hmm. No? We got this wall. You got that at school? Yeah. Can we begin and written a wall? And we got a cry. Not a cry. Kahoopy then is written the wall and be kind to get one at all. Good job. I, we are excited for them. Okay. So that a lot more kids that. Yeah. So it looks like we've got infill and solid infill are default at 80 Can millimeters a second. Death. Okay. He won. Uh, an award at school for being being good, so he wants to show everybody. It's got travel set at 150 no, millimeters a second. No, okay, you can go hanging on a tree. That'll be fun. Uh, small perimeters at 25 millimeters a second. External at 30. Perimeters are at 40. Bridges are at 30. First layer speed is actually quite slow for PLA, 20 millimeters. The retraction length on it is 3.2 millimeters. It's Z hopping uh, 0.2 millimeters. Got the re uh, retraction speed of 70 millimeters a second. Uh, D retraction speed is set at 40. 
it does have wipe turned on and 70% retract amount before wipe. So far, it's pretty clean, except uh, on this overhang area. I don't know if you can see that. The overhang is not incredibly clean. You know, I think uh, we're going to see some mods to the cooling fan on Thingiverse pretty quickly. All right, the twins are back. Not sure on the crash detection. I uh, haven't wanted to test that. No one stay away from the camera. No one stop. No, don't touch that. Don't touch this either. I should put them in here. Now I need to get dirt. No. We we can't get dirty. We can't put the iPad top on. So my I can't get dirty. Uh, yeah, the overhangs look like they can use uh, more more direct cooling. I can't feel it blowing through. I'm not wanting it. <laughs> uh, out. Me too. Yes, both of you out. Go watch your TV, please. I want to be quiet. No, but you're never quiet. You don't know how to be quiet. I'm not going to be quiet. I like quiet. It's a really quiet. You like quiet when you go night night? No, I like going to be quiet. <laughs> you want to, yeah. Can't quite tell if there's crash detection. It uh, looks like some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. So I'm definitely, uh, after this model prints, I'll definitely test that out. Yep, you're being quiet. Yeah, I think if you stick to some of the, the, the more the, the better brands, uh, you're going to be fine. Uh, Atomic Filament, uh, Prusament, um, the uh, the Polymaker, what do they call that? Uh, Polysmooth Filament uh, PLA. Um, I'm using the CraftBot PLA on it right now. 
uh, matter hackers, d depending on where you are in the world. I don't know where you are, Adam, but um, if you're in the States, that there's quite a few good choices for good PLA. I'm mainly going to be using PETG with this printer. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, so you're pretty close to atomic filaments. Uh, they ship really quickly, normally same day. Uh, knock on wood, I've not had a problem with them. I used to use Maker Geeks quite a bit, but um, I think we're going on two years and they still have not shipped me some filament and I don't even know if they're still in business. Yeah, I know it. Go to their website real quick. Okay, it says Maker Geeks officially shut down, so I guess I'm never going to get that filament I ordered. It's a shame. I used to talk to those guys when they first started. They were real nice. I guess they got too much. Steve, if you're listening, what uh, PLA do you like? You use PLA more than I do. Now, I tested uh, quite a few different uh, types of PLA, including, um, the, you know, the PLA that you uh, heat soak to uh, an anneal it. And the way my uh, particular part is designed, when you anneal it, the dimensions change. And too many of the dimensions change for me, for me to be able to, to compensate for that. And testing them in the sun, what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave them in a trailer. I'll leave them in a trailer or a car and, uh, you know, leave them in there for six months to see if they warp or, or distort in any way. Um, PETG has been great. Uh, You know, I've shipped, uh, I think, over tw uh, 2,500 so far. And I, out of that 2,500, I've, I've had two that uh, I, I had to warranty. That all started on accident. Um, had an early, early uh, Pegasus 10 3D printer. And what was this, 2014 or, or something like that? And I still have a few prints from that printer. I, I sold it to a guy who did uh, droids. But after that, I Anderson out. I really need to find my good tripod. This this thing wiggles way too much. I've got uh, three old Flash Forge Dreamers. They're from 2014, 2015. Um, they're, they're passing almost 30,000 hours of use. Early on, I had to replace quite a few... Uh, nozzles until I switched to Micro Swiss on them. And uh, once I put Micro Swiss in those, um, can generally go about a thousand hours before it, you know, I would see a jam or something like that. I've got one that's around 6,000 hours on the same nozzle and heat break. 
Yeah. No, not you. You want games? That's why you have tablets. Here's Minecraft. I think it's the only game on here. I guess Steve fell asleep again. He hey, tends to do that. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Hi, Anderson. It's right here. And the day and on the wall, their head is the feet on the feet the out in the out they can be in there the out But Adam, I mean, if you have easy access to Prusamen, if Amazon has it in stock, it's great stuff. Uh, I've not had a single problem with it. Knock on wood, I have not had a problem with atomic or matter hackers. Uh, color fab. <coughs> we had some good luck playing around with Amazon Basics. Um, now I guess it's called Overture. So far, I don't see any ringing. Everything, uh, you know, it's only printed 20 layers, but. Wow. Retractions are really clean. Get away from that. You're, you're going to do damage. Thank you. Stay away from that. Oh, Anderson, stop. Let me find something that's got a lot of ringing. Hey guys, quiet this. Okay, so here's a calibration cube. Let's see if I can get the angle right. Okay. You can see all of the, the lines inside the X and then outside the X. So some of it is actually the extruder itself, but these horizontal lines that you see are, are ghosting or ringing. Anderson, do not touch the Legos. You have Legos inside. For example, on this one, you can see a little bit of ringing on the corners. And then the rest of this is actually just how the extruder works, you know, the, the gears of the extruder. So you get less of that depending on the gear ratio of your extruder. Example, this print, you can see it's it's quite clean. You don't see any ghosting. You don't see any of the the, mark, the vertical banding from the extruder. Only a couple, sir.
And this one was printed, um, I, I think we we're pushing 200 millimeters a second. And this is a, a carbon fiber PLA. And this was on the rail core. So you can see some ringing right through here. And at 200 millimeters a second, that you know that's not a lot of ringing. And that's with a tight and narrow. Gotta say, I think this is the quietest printer I have in the shop. My flash forge machines get pretty loud. I use a Fusion 360 out of um, I've been using it for a couple of years, so I'm just kind of used to it. I know some people use Tinkercab and get good results. Uh, my brain, I just haven't been able to wrap wrap it around uh, Tinkercad yet. I don't know if Juan's in the uh, channel or not, but he uses Tinkercad. Just got a message that Steve tried to fast forward. And he said, uh, fast forwarding through the stream didn't work. Print is still quite clean and just again, just a little bit of problem on the overhangs. Turn it there. Good job. Turn I like that. Turn it there. We've got a creative Lego build to show you. There you go. There's the filament samples that they include. It says it's about uh, 25 grams. And in this case, they sent me a galaxy black and a vanilla white. Not enough uh, for much. Maybe a calibration cube. I, I doubt it would do a Benchy. Kids have fully cracked open the Legos. Go 
Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Turn on some more light and try to get a better angle on the print. And you can see the uh, the hot end design. And it's completely cool to the touch all the way down to the bottom. So I, I don't think there'll be any heat creep issues with, with how they design this. And there's quite a lot of airflow through the heat sink itself. If anybody has any questions or wants to talk about anything, um, feel free to suggest something. I did have a request to play elevator music. Was it fun? Was it fun? No, 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 no,
So from this angle, you can see some ringing around the, around the uh, tires. So the hot end I have uh, coming to show you guys tomorrow is uh, kind of a revitalized Pico hybrid hot end. It's an incredibly compact. It's um, hey Chris. Okay, so I'm using the stock uh, Prusa Mini Profile for 150 microns. It's doing infill at 80 millimeters a second, and everything else is around 40 millimeters a second. I did show off your screws about 20 minutes ago. Yes, this is a Craftbot PLA that I had laying around. And this is actually a two-part model. So the uh, it should articulate. Sorry, Chris. All you've missed at this point are the twins uh, bouncing around all over the place. And then uh, me not knowing how to use a screwdriver. So you got to let me know if you want the uh, the printer shipped on Monday. Because your screw is easily going to fit on the print bed. And the machine itself is high enough to handle your screw. Sorry, my kids have discovered a discarded uh, box of Legos that I had hidden away from them on purpose. Unfortunately, they were able to get it open, and so now we're going to have even more Legos to deal with. Jensen at home? Okay. Okay. You sit here and talk to people. Go on the other side, though. Explain the printer to them.
You doing that infusion or uh, SketchUp? Right. I can't get it close enough. Got an upgraded Lego model here. There you go. Yeah. And it's gonna take for a or you don't you? So you can go in the living room, that would be really nice. Cool. Take it in the living room. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I modeled our kitchen in uh, in SketchUp and our shower when we redid that. I haven't been brave enough to do it in Fusion. One of the guys that races with us, Chris, though, that's what he does. He does kitchens. He does all the cabinets and... and He just worked on a million dollar barn, barn house, and it had a Ferrari in the living room, and I think uh, uh, Shelby Cobra, I believe. I'll text you. I'll text you the pictures on that, Chris. It, it's a pretty cool barn. Interesting. I see a lot of ringing on that side of the print, but I don't see. I don't really see the same on this side. I think it's just the camera exaggerating the ringing. Yeah, look at, looking with my eyes, uh, the ringing is not as noticeable as it is on the camera. And that, that tends to happen with, with prints. You'll see more on the camera than you do with your, with your eyes. A little bit of Z inconsistency, so I think it's... Uh, over extruding just a tiny tiny amount yes one now default uh, profile for the mini this is the uh, 
0.15 millimeter profile. One, I, I definitely think the uh, the part cooling could be better. Um, overhangs were, were not as uh, not quite as nice as I would want. So I, I think the part cooler. I bet we'll see some uh, some part coolers on Thingiverse pretty quickly. Yeah, let me take the mirror apart real quick. There's uh, the camera with focus. Whoops, just lost the bearing now. So there's uh, the motor of the Hemera with the gear. Okay, so there's the Hemera drive gear, and it actually does look different than the Prusa. There's a different pitch to the gear, and the diameter of, of this gear appears to be different on the Prusa. Yeah, it looks like a 64 pitch gear on the on the Prusa compared to this, which is quite a fine pitch. Hi, Sebastian. Yeah, I said, so far it's a uh, a nice little machine. Here's another view of the Hemera taken apart. So that gear that I just had out goes in there. So here's the, uh, the tension lever. And there is the fin layout. Hey, Chris, have you gotten your Hemera printing yet? I know you and Juan have the same printer. You know, honestly, Juan, for for. Yep. Go. Um. The uh, well, the mono price. So it's the same as the the one, one how. Uh, but Chris did the duet upgrade and everything uh, with a volcano of point heat on it. Wow. Uh, I lost part of the Hemera in the uh, in the Prusa. Yeah, Chris actually went with one of the clones, and it was interesting. Uh, it had no firmware on it at all. Thank you. 
Yeah, Steve, I got to mail you one of the Hermes. Yeah, Hamera, okay. What is it, Greek goddess of, of fire or something like that? It's funny, the trademark issue with a shipping company, you know. I don't see how a, uh, an extruder would ever get confused with uh, shipping. So we now know the sound of Legos is louder than the uh, Craftbot 3 and the Prusa Mini. Chris, you had to use Bosa, though, to, to flash it, didn't you? You mean print volume or um, overall speed, Sebastian? Because it, it's a seven inch by seven inch bed, roughly. And you're right, that is a little choo choo. You can take these both to the living room. Yeah, let me uh, look up the actual total print volume. Surprisingly, it's it's enough for for what I need to do. It'll easily fit in. Uh, yeah, I think I think you're right, Juan. I was. And Chris, it looks like Maker Geeks is completely gone. Okay, so it says uh, max temp is 280 C compared to 300 C on the Mark III. Uh, max travel is this, the same at uh, 200 millimeters a second. So it's, a, it's 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters. Yep. Yeah, Bart got it. I don't know. Let, let me uh, play. It is incredibly quiet as it is. So in the tuning options, 
We've got speed, we've got nozzle temperature, we've got heat bed temperature. We have fan speed and the fan speed is shown. Um, uh, one can explain it, but uh, max fan speed is, is 255. So the range for the fan speed would be zero to 255. It's got a flow factor. And I'm actually gonna reduce that a little bit because I, I noticed just minor over excursion. And then it's got the live adjust and uh, a change filament option. Messages and the messages gives you the probing points. I do not see a way to get into stealth mode while I was printing. It, it's it's so quiet though. You, I don't know if it needs a stealth mode. On the dB meter, John, I, I max I was getting like forty eight decibels. Yeah, MK3 is what, 220 by 250 by 250 millimeters, I believe. You know, interesting that the, the size of this works for some of the stuff that I need to print farm. I'm, I'm excited to try the farm mode when that comes around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll fit on your desk fine. And it actually, you know, honestly, it, it does look quite good. In the extrusion, they've covered up the wires. They've got a black, uh, black rubber covering up the wires to hide that. I am surprised the uh, the front and the back of the of the Y axis are are, are three D printed. I was expecting that to be. Um, to be metal. Yeah, Warren, I was I was playing with that yesterday. The the ten millimeter rods are are, are incredibly stiff. And if you can see here, it's um I think a sixty or eighty millimeter bearing on the rods. So you got two of those. There is some play if you push on it, Lucas. I uh, on the dB meter, the loudest I've, the loudest it was was 48 decibels. Dad, Dad, no one keeps a boat in car. No one can Dad. Oh. Yeah, my craft bot inside is 55 decibels, and outside it's the same as this. It's 44 to 48. I mean, 44 to 48 decibels. So both machines are incredibly quiet. 
And I, I think the CraftBot 3 is con considered one of the, the quietest printers on the market. My kids have found my Lego stash, so that's what you hear. Juan, have you got a shipping notice on yours yet, or are you like, did you order on day four, day five? Actually, Randy, um, I, I picked it up uh, on Thingiverse, and it has some good overhangs, uh, especially when it gets to the top of the dozer. Um, so I wanted to print that to, to really test the, the, the cooling fan because I'm not 100% that I'm not 100% convinced that the uh, cooling fan is all that great for overhangs. And early on, when it was doing the the back of the bulldozer. You could you could see it was struggling a little bit. Huh. I wonder uh I guess the filament sensor delayed you. Yeah, hit up support and give me your uh, order number. My, my uh, day two printer already shipped. Yeah, I quit using filament sensors. They're even turned off on my MK uh, 2.5s. And on my CraftBot 3, the, the filament sensor was actually causing quite a bit of problems. So when I turned them off, the, the printer actually started working properly. I was having weird extrusion issues. And, and one remembers, uh, I, seeing the pictures, the the calibration cubes were just horrible. Let me see if I can put that some. So this is on the craft bot and you can see the holes there and, and that was caused by the filament sensor so the filament sensor couldn't detect the the movement for this layer height this is a hundred micron layer height and so the on on the craft bot what it does if it doesn't detect the, the filament moving correctly, it uh, stops the extruder and tries to, to clear the jam out. So every 45 seconds or so, the extruder would home itself and try to clear a jam. 
And so basically I was getting horrible, horrible prints out of it. Turned off the filament sensor and uh, it's been running for a month and a half, 24 hours a day with, with, without a single failure. You know, I think it's fine when you're printing for, uh, you know, the 0.2 millimeters, 200 microns. Uh, I was talking to the, the one of the pallet guys a long time ago, and he, even their sensor, he was describing to me, it, it only does so many so many pulses per second that it, that reads a filament. So it's probably the same thing as. Um, the way these are pulsing back to the board, the um, I'm guessing it be, between those pulses, it, it's not detecting the, the fine movements from the small layer height. That hurt me. Yeah, that Yeah, one. I mean, there were certain filament brands that just couldn't, the laser couldn't see at all. Yeah, for the MMU changes. <laughs> Have you seen their Christmas party? Uh, my knee-jerk reaction is it's it's a great beginner printer. I think it's going to be a good uh, farm printer for, for the smaller parts that I need. This bulldozer is doing good. Yeah, what are they up to? 300 employees or something like that? And um, I think Czechoslovakia drinks more alcohol than any country on the planet. And if you look at their Twitter and everything, you, you see all of them are, are, are drinking away. It's hilarious. Unfortunately, I've got to go to a Christmas party tonight. I'm not looking forward to that. We're going to a really nice steakhouse and <laughs> 10 cents a book. I want to go with you at night. No, you can't go. Why? It's a lonely work thing, buddy. So, yeah, we're going to a nice steakhouse and about the only good... And now I'm going to ping on because that of cool. Yes, you are going back to school. And now I'm going to ping. You're going to movie night. Yeah, and now I'm going to ping. Okay. Come on, call check you. And now I'm going to ping on you go back to school. Then we call check you. Yep. But I don't want to remind you. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to movie night at their school, so uh, it kind of works out nice. We go to the party and they, they go they go have fun at school. Okay, 
So yeah, anyway, back to this expensive steakhouse we have to go to. The only the only really good thing is the macaroni and cheese. Oh wow, they dropped to number four. Well, maybe after this party they'll be back to number one. Thank you. So next week I've got to get my Prusa Bear finished. You know, I went ahead and did uh, SLS parts. Oh, come on, camera. So they came out really well. No reductions. All right. Well, my Prince of Bear is the machine that I run the uh, MMU on. Yeah, I do enjoy Saltgrass one. They have some good cheesecake, too. Now I think I'm just going to leave it white. You know, be a little bit different, have a white person. And I did the extruder too, so. So there's the uh, bare extruder in SLS. Yeah, it's not fair one. On my bear, I am running Igus bushings. Uh, I haven't had a problem with them. The only thing I discovered is you have to keep the rods really clean. Otherwise, you get some sort of sticky residue going, and the Igus bushings don't like that. I can't tell if the printer is moving the uh, table or if the kids are moving the table. Pretty sure it's the kids. Yeah, one, a little bit. Um, you know, per the instructions on that particular, I guess you have to, you have to squeeze them a little bit. Yeah, correct. They do make, They have another, uh, I guess, bushing that has an aluminum uh, case around it. I've got a bunch of them. I just don't know where they're hiding. All right. Here we go. So there's an I guess with a cage around it so you don't have to do the compression. All right, sorry guys, got to show you another Lego model, unfortunately. There you go. Uh, it was called Bulldozer. Let me look on Thingiverse real quick. Please shoot to Yeah, on uh, Thingiverse. Uh, yeah, let me get you a link. Let me. 
using two different computers. So. Keep working. I do that. Keep working. Yeah. yeah. Play with that over there, not near the microphone, please. Okay, and there's no more. Okay, there's the link to the bulldozer. Ah, don't you dare do that. You will blow it up. No, no more. <laughs> Anderson was um, sticking the two and a half millimeter wrench all the way inside an Echo Dot. Not There's also a um, there's also a two color version of the model, but I don't I don't know where I found it. It's on Thingiverse somewhere, but basically the bucket was a a, a different model, so you could print in two colors. Yeah. No, don't. Quiet. No. You too. Yeah, it's not bad for out of the box. Um, it, it's really high up, though. I mean, it's uh, and it's at a weird angle too. But you know, all the step files are already on the GitHub, so you know you can uh, you can grab the um, the model files off the Prusa GitHub and and modify it. So it'll be quick and easy. Yeah, they've got it sort of hitting the block, and then the block has an angle cut out of it where it's hitting. And if I hold my hand out in front, you, there's a good amount of air being pushed through. It just to me, it's not hitting the right area of the print to, to cool it. And you can definitely see it down here around the bottom of the tire. And the ringing does not look this bad in person.
Yeah, correct, Ron. Juan, you could do quite a bit. Let's see if I can get a good shot of. So, I can't. With my eyeballs, I can barely see that ringing, and on the camera, it shows up quite a bit. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me go get my... Uh... Okay, so yeah, I got 180 millimeters on the square. 180. So on the bed, I've got 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters from the top rod. From the top rod, the uh, the wires are sticking up about 100 millimeters. And let's see, you wanted uh, sticking out. Yeah, the Bowden tube is quite short. It, it's maybe only 200 millimeters. And it, it's only sticking up 100 millimeters high. Height from the bed to the top of the motor is around 320 millimeters. And from the bed to where it would uh, end stop is 265 millimeters. Anderson, no. No, well, the, the power supply is um, external and, and probably three, yeah, maybe two meters of wire coming out of the back of the printer to the uh, power brick. And it is a mean well power brick. It's getting slightly warm, so, you know, it's fine. It's, uh, it's rated at 160 watts. So you can easily put the power brick outside the enclosure. Uh, the electronics would be a little bit harder to, to move outside the enclosure. The 
You could definitely design some sort of fan, though. Uh, LCD does have a little bit of room, and I'm, I'm sure you could replace the LCD wire. I'll back it up a little bit so you can see the LCD. Maybe. Yeah, it's like the standard ribbon, ribbon cable that you you see on the uh, on a Creality or the, uh, the the same ribbon cable on the the Prusa MK3. I need to turn it to get this overhang. So in the menu, we've got a pause, a stop, or settings. So in settings, we've got the speed, the nozzle temperature, the heat bed temperature, the fan speed, the flow control, your Z live height, uh, change filaments, Info, which we can't get into. Messages, which gives you the uh, the uh, all the pro points, and that, that's pretty much all it gives you. Let's try a pause here and see what that does. Yeah, I do like the new LC. All right, so that's paused, and we'll hit play again. And again, apologize for the twins making noise. They discovered an old box of Legos, and I guess it's like crack to them. I can't get them away from it. It is doing a good job. Good question, Juan. Let's pause it again and find out. Got the camera stuck. Okay, now the nozzle temperature does not drop when you pause it. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, honestly, it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. Definitely be, be fine sitting on, on your desk next to your computer. Uh, quite sturdy, though. And I'll, 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 I'll post some pictures of how they did the wiring. They did a good job of hiding the wires. Wow, you found a computer logo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This one was a day one order, so it was October 12th, and I had another one that I ordered on October 13th, and it shipped uh, this morning. I did not get the filament sensors, though. I, I, some guys were saying the filament sensors were, were causing a couple days delay. Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, they they found a box of, of Legos from when I was a kid, so that's what 32, 33 years ago, something like that. Out. No more. Anderson, no more. Go play with the Legos in the living room. No, you're not allowed to. Okay, there's a link um, of some pictures. 
Anderson. Anderson. One. Out. Both of you out. Out. No more. Okay, I hid the uh, Legos for now. It's a normal print. I can't find in the menu uh, stealth mode or anything. Uh, but on the DV meter, the loudest it's gotten filled is 48 decibels. Now they did use some tie wraps. I've got, I spotted you know, three tie wraps. So they definitely reduced their consumption of tie wraps. Yeah, my, my Mark 2.5 S's are, are quite a bit louder than this. I, I'd say this, this is pretty equivalent to uh, the MK3 or MK2.5 on stealth mode. does look like that uh, pausing at one did cause an issue. You can see the, uh, the split layer. Yeah, oddly enough, for quite a few of my prints, my daily prints, it, it, it fits fine. Um, I can do two models at once, you know, just let it run uh, 18 hours. And uh, so get, get two prints off of it per day. And, and I can also do some of my, my bigger prints will actually fit as well. 
Guys, no. No, you're not listening right. Out. Please, you're not listening right. Back the camera out for a second and show you the the two uh, two build plates. Let's see. So there's the MK3 plate. I've got another plate. I've got a BLV plate. Let me grab that. All right, so here is the mini plate, the MK3 plate, and then that is my BLV plate. And this BLV plate was done by Subtle Design here in the US. Yep, got the green PEI going. That's the, the, the smooth sheet. I guess we can't see the printer anymore. There's still quite a lot you can print with the with the print size though. I know. Yes, you go help mommy. Don't want to focus at that angle, does it? I guess that's a little bit better. Moving around hasn't seemed to bother it at all. Yeah, my palette is with Chris if he's still listening. So I guess he can try uh, try the palette out on, on his mini. Okay, but my wife just walked in the door and like said, so we've got that party. So I'm going to just let you watch the stream for, for a bit till this finishes. And I'm going to go check with her and see what time we have to go to that party and everything. 
But yeah, a little disappointing that uh, when we paused the print that we got that uh, that issue on that layer. Looks like it didn't restart the filament. I really like the Mark III's. Uh, quite a lot fits. You know, I can do some really big prints on them. Uh, I've done prints on the MK3 that, that covered the entire bed. I'm going to try it one. Uh, on Reddit, it looks, you know, some people are saying yes and some people are saying no. So def definitely want to test it. But anyway, I'm going to go check on the family, so I'll, I'll be back here in a few. Let's see. Uh, it should start getting to the more complex parts now. It's going to start building the cabin, and then it'll start building a roof. Yeah, exactly one. It probably oozed out. We had it paused long enough to where it could ooze out. It looks like we're going to have to start getting ready for the Christmas party that we have to go to tonight. So I'm just going to let this run. And there's some smart people in the chat if anybody has questions. Uh, Juan and Steve uh, are quite knowledgeable. Chris is quite knowledgeable. We, we paused it a couple times, Adam, and I, I think it just uh, oozed out of the nozzle enough that when it tried to restart, there, there, was, there was not enough uh, in the chamber. We were pausing it to see what it would do to the temperature. Up above, though, I did post uh, some pictures on Instagram. Yeah, one, maybe. We'll find out. All right, one, hit me up on Discord if it does anything goofy. Or you can probably hack into it from here. You're pretty good at that. It's doing the top layers really well, though. Whoa. Sorry, guys. Don't mean to make you sick.
again. Yeah. Right. It almost got it.